Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to first say thanks to the Richardson Symphony for the invitation to, to perform with them tonight. It's really nice. I've been looking forward to it for many months now. And I uh, appreciate it again that uh, all of you could be here. It's uh, nice to have a, a great audience. We've worked in this area many times, and some of you have seen us, some had, but we appreciate you being here. And if you have or if you, or if you haven't, it doesn't matter. But anyway, we've got a lot of music to play, and this is really fun for me to work with a big group like this. I brought some guys with me from Nashville. I'll tell you who they are in a little bit, but let's do some music. Let's play a song that uh, Ronnie Millsap had a big hit on. It's a beautiful thing called It Was Almost Like a Song.
<laughs> Thank you. I thought you'd recognize that song. A little good Texas song called San Antonio Rose. I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Chris Zeros for lending us his orchestra tonight. That is really great. And he's been such a great uh, personality and friendliness this afternoon at, at rehearsal. Anything we wanted, he, he got for us. Right, guys? That's right. He's a good guy. Also, the uh, symphony manager, Judy, uh, she has been very nice and helpful and arranging things for us to make it a little easier for us when we came down and uh, everything has just been super so we appreciate that now let's do another song this is going to be one that was written by chris christopherson and i remember him in nashville many years ago when i was doing studio work he was working in the studio setting up microphones before the session and then tearing them down after the session so it wasn't but a year or so and then we were doing that for him <laughs> But he wrote this song, and that's uh, what happened to him. It's a, it's a great song called For the Good Times. Here's a peppy little song written about a town in South Central Tennessee, so a lot of you may have been there, called Chattanooga Choo Choo.
Thank you. That had a little fire in it, didn't it? Yeah, let's do now. It's a medley of three of my favorite songs that I've recorded over the years. So I put them in a medley because I liked all three of them. I think you'll recognize it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to introduce to you now the, the guys that travel with me from Nashville, Tennessee. They're fine musicians. First from the electric bass is a guy who uh, does, does a lot of sessions in Nashville. He's part of the Nashville sound that, that helped create that, uh, that music industry there. Uh, he does uh, sessions with a lot of people. He's a uh, regular on Hee Haw. He works with us on the Million Dollar Band, along with Chet Atkins, Boots Randolph, Danny Davis, Roy, I mean Roy Clark, and uh, a bunch of them. This is a great uh, musician, Mr. Henry Strelecki. <laughs> a 
My drummer back here is one of the uh, most requested drummer in Nashville. He does a lot of jingles and sessions. He's played on the last two or three albums I've recorded. And he's a fine musician, Mr. Mark Morris. And way over on the electric guitar is another studio musician and a producer, but he's been in the studio since uh, I came to Nashville. He's been in there day and night for many years, worked with just about everybody in music that has recorded in Nashville at one time or other. And he does some producing, uh, new artists and so forth. And he's a great musician, Mr. Harold Bradley. Uh, last but not least, you got a little... Uh, introduction earlier from my conductor, but he is a guy that's been in Nashville for many years and he has written most of the arrangements that you'll hear tonight and he's worked uh, with Brenda Lee and uh, I don't know who else, everybody in Nashville, he's George Smith, no that's Jones, George Jones, yeah, see, great, he's, he's good with names too, but he's a fine musician, he plays trumpet, but he didn't bring his trumpet tonight, he said he didn't want to, he said he's been taking up golf and that uh, golf has taken up more time than, uh, but he's, uh, he's not very good in golf, I'll tell you that. He plays crazy. He did hit, hit uh, something that I've never had done yet on the golf course. He had a hole in one, and I'm sure if he had time, he'd have done told you all about it. But uh, what he did, it was a, like a par three, 140 yards, and he hit a seven or eight wood or something, you know, something ridiculous off the tee and hit a tree and bounced across the water and went through the sand trap, rolled up on the green, hit the flag, went straight in. <laughs> Just your run of the mill, hole in one. Yeah. No, I tell you, I wasn't there, but I would imagine it, he hit it like a pro and it went right straight in. So that's, let's leave it like that. Anyway, he's a great guy, Mr. Bill McElhaney. Now we're going to do a song that uh, takes us back a few years. This was uh, RCA's biggest selling record before Elvis came along. It's called Tommy Dorsey's Boogie Woogie.
Thank you. Uh, this next song was the theme from a movie, and the movie won an Academy Award a few years ago, and the song went on to become the number one pop song in the country. And we recorded it, and it's, uh, I think it's a beautiful song. I've got a little special introduction here I've got to do. Let's see if I can find the note. There it is. It's called Chariots of Fire. Thank you very much. Now this is a, a happy medley. I like happy love song medleys. Uh, the first song on this medley uh, probably will hit a nerve on some of you because uh, it's about, it was written about a place where you found your first love on Blueberry Hill. In my case, it was out by the fire tower in South Arkansas. And I'm sure all of you have your own little individual places. But this is a happy love song with, and I think you'll know these songs.
I always worried about that ending until we get it. And that time we got it. It's one of those endings if you, if you were dancing, you'd wind up with one foot in the air, you know. That's great. I'd like to do now a song that's kind of a light classic. About as classical as you'll hear me tonight, but <clears throat> I'd like to do it for, especially for you people out there who may be <clears throat> starving a little to death for a little culture on this part of the show. <clears throat> and you have to get yourself, as you know, in the frame of mind to listen to this type of song. So you have to kind of think up, relax your mind. Well, think uppity, maybe that's the word for it. And uppity. Anyway, if you'll bear with me, this is called Prelude in C Minor. And I record it and I call it Prelude to Love. We got through that. Yeah. I want to do now a song written by uh, Mr. Fred Rose. A lot of people have recorded this over the years, and this song will last forever, I know. It's one of my favorite country songs called Blue Eyes, Crying in the Rain.
Thank you. I'd like to know, do now a, a song that I played for my oldest daughter's wedding a few years ago. Time flies when uh, you're having fun, but it's been nearly 12 years ago that my oldest daughter got married. Of course, I was embarrassed because I was so young at the wedding. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, it's a special song that meant a lot to her. And I might as well tell you about my, the rest of my family. That's my oldest daughter, so obviously I have a younger daughter. Her name is Donna. She's married. I have two little kids. Diane, my oldest daughter, I've got to tell you about her first now because she's oldest. She's married and has a fine husband named Bobby. Uh, and two little, I've got two little granddaughters, Jenny, who is nine years old, Jesse, who is six years old. Jenny's in the fourth grade, Jesse's in the first. And I get to see them just about every day. They're the prettiest little things you'll ever want to see in your life. They're as sweet as they can be. They're just like their mother and their Aunt Donna was when they were growing up. It's just like an instant rerun for to see them every day. And especially Jenny looks so much like Diane did when she was growing up. But they're sweet little girls. And, of course, Donna, my youngest daughter, is married to a fine man. By the way, I couldn't have handpicked two better guys. I guess I give them credit for having good choice, you know, of picking out. Because I don't think I could have found two guys any better than Joe and Bobby are. And they've got a sweet family, a good family. And uh, I've got a little grandson. His name is Jason. I've got two of them. One, Jason is four years old, April 2nd. And Josh is eight months old. And uh, he's just in his little uh, walker now, and he's banging into everything, you know, going every which way. And uh, Jason is an amazing little child. He's already playing the piano and singing, and he has been for two years. You know, I couldn't even weigh bye-bye until I was five years old. <laughs> but he's... You know, he, he wanted, you know, Jenny and Jesse doesn't play very much. He doesn't have really a musical ear like Jason does. And he's able to hear a song and just go to the piano and pick it out. And he told me, he told his mama, says, well, his real, you know, his full name is Jason Floyd Coleman. He said, well, mama said, maybe the reason I play is because my name is Floyd, like my granddad. <laughs> and I said, well, it could be, I don't know. But he, he is a... Uh, I just have to uh, bring him down here and show him to you to, for you to believe him, but he's already reading probably second grade level. I, it's scary how much, how well he can read and write. And I don't know what they're going to do when school starts, to tell you the truth. But uh, he may be a uh, substitute uh, teacher or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he, he's got a lot to learn. I know that about being around kids and everything. He goes to two days, Mother's Day out, they call it now, two days a week. But uh, I was taking him to school. He called me the other morning. He calls us, you know, often. Granddad said, can you take me to school in the morning? I said, I'd be glad to. So I went over there and got him. We were riding over, and he had his little seat belt fastened, you know. He was looking up, and the way kids think, their minds, he said, Granddad said, see those? It was some jet contrails in the air, you know, the clouds on the clear blue sky. He said, see those airplane tracks? You know, who had ever thought they'd call them airplane tracks but a child, you know? And I never really thought of it that way. But anyway, and by the way, I am married. <coughs> Going on 35 years. I was married when I was 12, I guess it was, something like that. Thank you. Of course, I've got a sweet little country girl from Arkansas. Her name is Mary, and I do love her. Uh, now, let's see. I was going to do a song, wasn't I? Yeah. I forgot. Oh, I got pictures, too, after the show, if y'all want to see the grandchildren. <laughs> this is called Twelfth of Never.
Thank you. Thank you. Now this other song I was telling you about, I played for Donna, my youngest daughter's wedding. And it's, uh, it's a great song, a good arrangement. Bill McElhaney wrote the arrangement for this. I know he did. It's called Morning Has Broken. Thank you. Those are beautiful songs. Uh, I'd like to do now a really happy song written by Mr. Billy Joel. I heard this in one of his, I guess, his first album. And I, he just played the fire out of it. And I've, I record it and been trying to play it right ever since. But we have a lot of fun with it. It's called Root Beer Rag.
Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're really a nice audience, a super audience. And in fact, I'd like to know where you're going to be peering next so we can come see you. That'd be nice. Well, maybe we can come back and see you all sometime. That'd be fun, too. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to do a uh, medley of songs written by who I think is one of the greatest country singers and songwriters that ever lived, Mr. Hank Williams.
Thank you. Thank you. How about a nice hand for the musicians? Mr. Henry Strelacki, stand up. Mr. Mark Morris, Harold Bradley, and Bill McElhaney, and the entire Richardson Symphony. Stand up, please. Aren't they great? They are super. Boy. It's great. Thanks again for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks to uh, Chris and Judy for their hospitality. And we're, we're going to do another song that uh, you may have heard of this song. It's a theme from a Friday night television soap opera. It comes on once a week. Shows part of this here, a city. I recorded this song for RCA, and it did pretty well in the country charts, in spite of the fact it wasn't a country song. But this kind of gives everybody a chance to, to do something. Ah, let's do it. It's called Theme from Dallas. Thank you. We're just coming back anyway. <laughs> I just want to stretch my legs. Well, since you asked for it, let's do one more song. And this is a good old uh, song that uh, you can so identify with parts of Texas. <laughs> some of you people may call this, some of you sophisticated people may call this the William Tell Overture. We call it the Lone Ranger theme. <laughs> 